To remove a background in Photoshop, simply click the Remove Background button in the taskbar. Photoshop will then detect the main subject and create a layer mask that hides the background. The results are good and might be enough for your current project, but this is definitely not enough if you want professional results. In this tutorial for beginners, I'll share the professional techniques and Photoshop brushes I use to remove backgrounds in Photoshop for the movie and TV posters I create. My goal is to teach you these pro-level techniques in a straightforward three-step formula. My name is Jesus Ramirez, let's get started. Step one in my Photoshop background removal method is to select the main subject. Instead of using the remove background feature, I prefer to press Ctrl Alt R on Windows, that's Command Option R on the Mac, to enter the Select and Mask workspace. If you don't like keyboard shortcuts, you can access this workspace by going into the Select menu and choosing Select and Mask. This workspace gives you the tools and more control for creating selections. Let's start by exploring the main areas of this workspace. You will notice the toolbar on the left side. It contains tools for creating and refining selections. The options bar at the top provides additional controls for the currently active tool. On the right side, you will see sliders crucial for fine tuning the edges of your selections. The default view is onion skin where the unselected areas show at 50% opacity over a checkerboard pattern. Let's continue with step one, creating the selection. You can make selections in several ways in the Select and Mask workspace. For smaller objects, like an article of clothing, I recommend using the Quick Selection tool. Simply click and drag over the image, and Photoshop will automatically find the edges and expand the selection to match. Notice that the pants now show at 100% opacity, indicating that they're selected. But in this image, I want to select the entire person. To deselect and start from scratch, press Ctrl D on Windows or Command D on the Mac. Then, to select the entire person, use the Select Subject button in the Options bar. It works similarly to the Remove Background button we used earlier. But before clicking it, I recommend choosing Cloud from the dropdown. When you use the cloud, Photoshop will send the image to Adobe service to create a more accurate selection. Just remember, you'll need an internet connection for it to work. If you're offline, no worries, stick with the device option. It does not require an internet connection. Here's a comparison between device and cloud. They're close, but the cloud option produces a better selection. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe if you learn something new. The automatic selection is very good, but in most cases, it will require extra work. For example, in this image, we need to improve the area around her hip. You can use the zoom tool and click to zoom in to get a better look. In this case, we need to improve the edge on her pants and remove the background from the belt loop. You can use the quick selection tool or the brush tool. The difference is that the brush tool only selects the areas that you paint directly over. It does not expand or detect edges. In this case, we'll use a brush tool. You can resize your brush tip by tapping on the left and right bracket keys. Those are the keys to the right of the letter P in North American keyboards. Or you can resize by using the brush setting sliders in the options bar. I'll paint the background back in to better see the edge. Then I'll reduce my brush size by tapping on the left bracket key. I'll hold Alt on Windows, that's option on the Mac, to temporarily enable the subtract mode and I'll paint away the background, which will create a better edge. And again, while holding Alt or Option, I will remove the background, but this time from the belt loop. When you're done, you can double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. Now that we have selected the main subject, we can move on to step number two, refining the global edges of this selection. Don't worry about hair or intricate details just yet. It's difficult to see the edges in this view mode, but you'll see them much better if you switch to the black and white view. In this view mode, the selected areas are in white and those not selected are black. Notice the jagged and somewhat blurry edges. They will give you an unprofessional look to your background removal. To improve these edges, we can use the global refinement sliders. In most cases, I only apply two adjustments. First, I use the smooth slider to smoothen the edges. Each image is different, so experiment with how much smoothing it needs. In this case, this looks pretty good. See how much smoother the edges look? Then I like to use the contrast slider to sharpen the edges. Remember, 
we're working with global adjustments. We'll focus on hair and other specific details in the next step. Sometimes you may need to feather, which means to blur the edges, but it's unnecessary in this image, so I'll bring it back to zero. The shift edge slider allows you to contract or expand the selection to help reduce edge halos. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'll change the view mode to on black to view the selection against a black background. I'll increase the opacity to 100%. This view makes the white edges or halos more noticeable. Photoshop made a great selection in this case, so we don't have a strong outline. But if I press the Z key to enable the zoom tool and click to zoom into this area, you can see the white outline around the shirt and you can use the shift edge slider to try to minimize it. In this case, it works great, but if your edge halos are too extreme and do not disappear, then use the advanced technique I will share with you at the end of the video. Now that we have good edges around the main subject, we can move on to step number three in this formula, which is working on details like hair. But in your image, this could be fur, shaggy clothing, or anything that does not have a sharp edge. Let's start by applying the selection we just created to our image. From the output settings, choose Layer Mask from the drop-down menu and press OK. Photoshop will then apply the selection as a layer mask, hiding the unselected areas. Remember, a layer mask hides, it doesn't delete anything. Maintaining editing flexibility is crucial in professional workflows because clients can often change their minds or you could easily reveal something you hid by mistake. Let's now refine the minor details. To do so, we'll edit this new layer mask. From the Layers panel, double-click on the Layer Mask thumbnail to open the Select and Mask workspace. The mask looks precisely the same as it did before, but the global refinement sliders are no longer affecting it. They are all at zero. We are now applying a separate adjustment from the previous one. Applying the hair adjustment separately will prevent oversmoothing or damaging fine edges. In this step, we'll use the Refine Edge Brush tool. It uses Photoshop's edge detection algorithms to capture fine details that standard selection tools might miss. As you brush along the edges of your subject's hair, the tool analyzes the content differentiating between the foreground and background. When using this tool, you can click the Show Edges checkbox to see where Photoshop applies this edge detection algorithm. And of course, it's the areas where you paint it over. Also, you can try the Refine Hair button to use artificial intelligence to attempt to locate hair in your image and apply the same adjustment as the Refine Edge Brush tool over the areas it finds. It does a decent job in some cases, but in this image, it removed part of the hand and other areas I would like to keep. So a manual adjustment will likely be the better option. I'll press Ctrl Z on Windows Command Z on the Mac to undo, and I'll brush around her hair with the Refine Edge Brush tool. And in areas like these, you can just click without dragging. Notice how the hair remains and the background disappears. If you make a mistake, hold Alt or Option and drag to remove the brush stroke. When you're done, press OK, and Photoshop will apply this new adjustment to the previous layer mask. At this point, you could be done. But depending on your image, you may need a bit more work. Let me now show you a few of the most common pitfalls when removing backgrounds in Photoshop and how to solve them. Incomplete masks or overmasking is the most common issue you will have. It simply means that parts of the background were not entirely hidden, resulting in remnants of the original background appearing around the subject. Or some parts were hidden that should have not been. To fix either of these problems, enable a brush tool from the toolbar. Then click on the layer mask from the layers panel. Here's a tip. Press D on the keyboard to set black and white as the background and foreground colors and tap the X key to swap them. Make sure black is your foreground color, then paint to hide the remains of the original background. To reveal hidden content, tap the X key to make your foreground color white and paint over the image to reveal. One of the biggest secrets pros have is that if things are too challenging to select, we just ignore them. We hide the problematic areas and just paint in the detail instead. I have a custom brush I used on many professional projects that you can download for free. The link is below. To install it, just double click on the ABR file you downloaded. When you open the brush settings from the options bar, you will see this new folder containing all the brushes we will use in this video. 
Click on this one to enable the fly away hairbrush. Then from the layers panel, create a new layer and drag it below the main subject. Now hold Alt on Windows or Option on the Mac to temporarily enable the eyedropper tool and click on her hair to sample the color. Notice that her hair color is now the foreground color. Then you need to match the brush preview as best as possible to your image. Use the bracket keys to resize the brush and the left and right arrow keys to rotate. When it lines up, click to paint. These flyaway hairs look much better than any selection or mask that I could create. I've also included a brush that allows you to paint single flyaway hairs. To use it, create a new layer on top of everything else and paint the single hair strands as needed. And if you need to paint fuzzy edges, you can use this brush. When you hold shift and click on the layer mask, you will disable it. Notice that the edges in this sweater will be incredibly difficult to select. It's easier and you'll get better results if you paint the detail back in. I'll click on the layer mask to enable it, then on the blank layer, and I'll paint along the edge. It's not a perfect match. Remember, you don't have to be faithful to the original edge. You have artistic license to create something that looks realistic. And let me know what you think about these brushes. If you find them useful, then like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. It really helps out if you do. Sometimes because of the photo's depth of field, you'll work with subjects with varying degrees of blurriness around their edges. A global blur or sharp edge will not work in these cases. To solve this issue, you can enable the blur tool from the toolbar and paint over the mask to blur the edges to match the original image. Sometimes it helps if you hold the Alt key on Windows or Option key on the Mac and click on the layer mask to see the black and white view. Notice that in this view, it's much easier to see the blur that we're applying to the mask. You can switch back to the original view by applying the same keyboard shortcut and then continue blurring the edges. If after masking your main subject, you still have a strong outline around it, click on the mask, go into filter, other, and choose minimum. This filter will contract the mask. From here, select roundness to give you more control and drag the slider until the edges disappear. But for more precise control, I like to click on the input box and tap on the up arrow key to move the slider in smaller increments. Another great advantage of the minimum filter over the shift edge slider is that you can apply it locally. For example, if we only wanted to contract the mask around her hip, we could enable the lasso tool and freehand a selection around that area. Then we can go into filter, other, and minimum. From here, we can contract the mask like before, but this time it only contracts around the selected area. When removing a color background, some of the color may reflect onto the subject, causing a color cast around the edges. This is a common problem when working with green screens. To fix this issue, create a new layer above your main subject, then apply a clipping mask by pressing Control Alt G on Windows. That's Command Option G on the Mac. This means that the layer below will control the visible areas of the layer on top. That's what the arrow represents. Then click on this drop down and change the blending mode to color. Now with the brush tool, hold Alt on Windows or Option on the Mac to temporarily enable the eyedropper tool and click on a similar color next to the edge. And now you can paint away the color spill. If this color effect is too intense, you can reduce it by decreasing this layer's opacity. This effect is subtle, but when you compare it to the original, you can see that it makes a huge difference. Once you remove the background of an image in Photoshop, you can go into File, Export, Export As, and export this image as a PNG to keep the transparent background. Again, if you learned something new, hit like and subscribe.